So I show them what automobiles and airplanes will eventually look like, and then I show them all these variations. Then I show them the city, and uh, I tell them that not everybody wants to live in an individual home. Some people like apartments because there's a drama group, swimming pool, gymnasium, all in one. These people have to go to the gym. So I think that in the future, people will live in gigantic complexes with everything. Schools, libraries in there, restaurants, everything. And But you have to do this now, because this is where people are at. They can't make that transition that fast. So if this is public health, you if you work here, you live here if you choose to. Here is like outdoor here. Beautiful gardens, lakes, waterfalls and tennis courts, bicycle paths through the forest, golf course. But the golf course has a clubhouse. In there you pick the clubs. You want play, leave them there. What do you lug it all that crap around? You got a closet full of shit. You know what I mean? Really. So if you make things available, leave them there. There's more things for more people. So you open a closet and you see all kinds of stuff. Now you, when you check out a camera at the camera center, we ask you that when you're through, drop it off at the camera center. There they keep them in key shape. I don't want you to have a closet full of stuff. So here's a drama group. They produce plays, theater. They shoot television, movies. Everybody in the public is free to access anything without going to a committee. What's this? In there is shopping center, dental care, medical care, child care, schools. So you don't have to build a suburbia and then drive that way to the dentist, that way for shopping, take your kid to school and the other drive. That's a lot of poison in the atmosphere. Mm -hmm. So there are no cars permitted in this city. There's traveling units that travel around the circle, take you anywhere in your dial where you want to go. Art center, music center. Cars will be phased out. But transitionally, I have to deal with the in-betweens, you know? So, this is only one type of city. There will be many different types that serve many functions. See, they talk about decentralizing today because government doesn't know what's going on in California, so they want little governments in each area. But with now radar and with technology, computers, you can centralize again and see every, the whole country as a system. So we're going to go back to centralization. Wind farms, geothermal, heat concentrators, no toxic materials. There's no home for the poor, nothing like that. There's no poor anymore. And when a city hits a certain size, depending on where it's at, let's say this one, about 40,000 people, we let everything go back to nature between this and the next city. But they're interconnected by monorail. Okay? These are for transporting fluids and chemicals, and yet animals have to migrate pass and then it doesn't stop them from migrating. So whenever we build a dam, we build a step system so the fish can get up to the spawning grounds. If you build a dam and you don't build this accommodating step system where the fish can jump up, you're hurting nature. So people get mad at the dam. It's not the dam. The dam is great. Let's just include natural life all around it. So that's what love means to me. That's you know, spirituality. That's what spirituality is. The rest is words. There's no wood to rot. There's no tent you have to put over the building to poison the bugs out of it. We just build buildings and we want to go on and build other buildings and not have to worry. There's not much maintenance. They're very pleasant. And there's a, an odd looking helicopter going overhead. Do you get a lot of air traffic? No, not usual. No, maybe they know we're here. <laughs> we have 22 acres, a little over 22 acres. We dug streams and put up bridges. We dug ponds and put in hundreds of palm trees. They're not indigenous, the types of palms we put in. We put in flower trees, bushes, fruit trees, all kinds of fruit trees. And we have decks and bridges. It looks like a little paradise, banana trees. It is a little paradise. And all the buildings are round. Even where there's a flat surface, it ends in a round curve. 
Well, it's very strong. The dome uses the least amount of material to cover the most space. And there's no roof to blow off. There's no shingles to blow off. It's all one structure. So it's extremely strong. And we live in hurricane country. Oh, there's a deer. Oh, yes. We oh. see deer outside our window. In fact, there's one deer that's so friendly to us that we can pass it right on the road about five feet apart. Do you have alligators? Alligators. We do have alligators. This is their land, so we dug out ponds so the alligators come and go. What is that white texture on the outside of the buildings? A lot of the buildings we spray with foam on the outside, too. Oh, okay. it, it helps if there's any leaking, and it helps insulate buildings. And then we use elastomeric paint on the outside, hmm. and we kind of make our own texture with sand mixed in with the paint. Okay. We experimented with many things here, so mm -hmm. many of the buildings will look very unusual. I had occasion to use the washroom during a break from our recording already today, and I see a little formed pencil holder right by the toilet, and you were saying that Jacques will often compose new imaginative yes. drawings there's sitting no, on the toilet. There's no downtime for Jacques. He's working all the time. Even when he goes to the bathroom, he'll come out and bring out five new designs, beautiful drawings, and then he'll make models of them, then he'll film them, and I'll edit them in a DVD about the future. Just amazing. All right, we're going over to another building here. Drawing room and studio. And you can see we make our railings out of aluminum. See, I do architectural drawings, too. And I make architectural models on the outside for funding to help support the project in any way that I can. Then we sell the books and videos, which help support the project. Mm -hmm. So a group of people come up to you and says, hey, let's build one of your little communities, you know. So we made a down payment on 40 acres in Naples. And then all of them pulled out. Some people used to think they pulled out because they said they didn't think the zoning board would let my stuff go up. So they just stopped. And Roxanne and I and another person were left holding the slip on 40 acres. So we had to sell it. It was 600 bucks an acre. If they hung on it, they'd all been millionaires today. But they didn't. I didn't twist anybody's arm. But I went to the head of the zoning board anyway and opened up my print. He said, what is this? You know, I said, you have to give me at least 15 minutes or we'll come into my office. He spent an hour and a half with me. And the first thing he says, can I join your organization? Head of the zoning board. I'll do everything I can to get this built. Mm. And I said, we have no organization. I wouldn't go back and say, hey, the zoning board likes it. I don't right. buy that. If they don't know what it is that I want to do and don't identify with it, I don't want a minute. Then we came here. They asked us to put up one building, the zoning board. Put one up. We want to check it out. Mm -hmm. So they looked at it and said, you could put a back truck on the roof of your buildings. They're very well built. Build anything you want to build. If anybody bothers you, have them call us. Yeah, Marvelous. they said, you overbuild. We're just here to protect people. Do what you need to do. Because they came and they looked at everything. They brought everybody down here. The police, the, the zoning board, the architects. And they loved it. We looked all over the state and we bought this 10 acres. We originally bought 10 acres here in Venus because it was pristine and untouched. And we wanted to experiment with a lot of things here, buildings and energy systems and a lot of different things. Somebody came up to me and said, uh, two million people die a year in Africa of, of malaria. Oh, they used to spray oil on the swamp, and that keeps the larvae from getting out of the water and they die. Then they stopped that because the fish died too. So they spray poisons on it, and that goes down to the water table. So I was thinking about that, and I said, gee, this is pretty easy to get rid of malaria. What I do is put a lamp under the water with a color spectrum that moves, which attracts mosquitoes at night into the water. And the fish eat them, and you get more fish, and you feed more people, and you don't poison the lakes. I've been working on things, and I've been worked on medical devices, artificial knees, surgical instruments, all kinds of different things. And the doctors would take out the patents. That's all I didn't care about, as long as they use it. And so that was good. I'm just trying to tell you what you go through if you deviate from the culture, you have a lot of problems you have to deal with. I've got a question for you about education. If everyone was like you, asking questions all the time, you'd have to have a whole different model of teacher. There's really no teachers. There are people that have information. In school, they totally try to tell me plants grow. And I said, no, they don't. 
plants can't grow unless it has gravity, moisture, nutrients, sunlight, 